Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Mont Community College Board of Trustees Virtual Candidate Forum. I'm Matt Franklin. I'll be serving as your co-moderator for this afternoon's event. And I'm Summer Williams, a graduate of MCC's Media Arts and Entertainment Technology Program and the recipient of the 2020 Paul Carr Award. Now, we would like to thank all of our viewers for logging on and joining us for this very important event today. You will have the opportunity to meet and to learn more about the candidates who are hoping to earn your vote as they are running for the Board of Trustees. And remember, voting is that all important date, the no 3rd of November. Please keep in mind that this is an unprecedented election cycle for the Board of Trustees. There are two positions open for the board with seven candidates and no incumbents, making the election all the more important. And keep in mind, too, that this forum is all about you, the voters. So we don't want you just to be a spectator. We want you to be a participator. We want you to uh, join in with us. And we want you to submit questions that will be asked towards the end of the forum. You can submit those questions to QS4 candidate at mcc.edu. Again, that address is QS4 candidate at mcc.edu. Now it's time to learn a little bit more about our candidates. They have prepared opening statements. Each candidate will have three minutes to give a brief overview about their qualifications, why they're running, and their vision for Mont Community College. And we are going to start with Michael Sikovich, if he is here. All right, I do not see Michael. So let's go now to Mr. John Daly. My name is John Daly, and I'm running for the Board of Trustees of my community college so that I can uh, hopefully help lead a closer alignment between the goals of the, of the college with the needs of the community in Genesee County. A little bit about myself. This isn't my first rodeo by a long shot. Uh, I'm an eclectic. I come from a family of teachers. Uh, I have... Uh, 30 years plus in public administration. I spent the first, I've had actually three professional lives. I spent 22 years in the U.S. Marine Corps, retired as a lieutenant colonel. I then spent uh, six years at the faculty of the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And from there, I moved into public administration, what I've been doing for the past 20 years. Uh, I, As far as ac academic credentials, I have a, a doctorate in uh, administration a first master's degree from the Naval Postgraduate School, and a second master's degree from the University of Southern California with a Bachelor of Arts in History and Computer Science from Texas A&M. I also have a uh, Fulbright, did a Fulbright at the University of Waterloo, and I've done uh, postgrad work in sustainability at uh, the University of Cambridge. Right now, we are at a, at a cusp. Uh, of where we're going to proceed with regards to education and its education's alignments with the economic and professional needs of our society. The, the COVID-19 uh, virus is a harbinger of what's to come. The nature of the academic community and virtually the entire del service delivery community is going to have to change significantly in order to achieve the goals that society warrants us to achieve. The, uh, my background is in public administration. I've been on numerous uh, state and local boards. I'm currently serving on the Michigan Infrastructure Council. Prior to that, I served on the, uh, the uh, Supply Chain Management Development Commission for the state of Michigan. And I also am currently a member of the Rotary Club of Flint and serve on the United Way of Genesee County Board. I'm looking forward to this opportunity because I think that education is even going to be even more important as we progress into the fourth industrial revolution. And we're fortunate in Genesee County to be located at uh, where there's going to be an apex in technology associated with the automotive industry. 
So I welcome the opportunity to proceed in this forum and I look forward for the opportunity to serve on the Board of Trustees at Mott Community College, uh, participating as a board member and bringing a plethora of experience and education to the board to support the board in its endeavors to obtain the goals that are necessary for the community and the college to move forward. All right, Mr. Daly, thank you so much. Your time is up. Summer? Next, we have Janet Couch. It looks like she's not with us, so then we'll move to Chris Johns. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be on the forum today. I'd first like to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. I live in Burton with my daughter, Karis, and my wife, Vanessa, and I'm running because I'm committed to our community. And that ranges from building dog parks in Burton and Grand Blanc to volunteering on a regular basis in the Hurley Behavioral Medicine Unit with my wife and our therapy dog, Sadie, even extending into raising money to purchase a piece of needed medical equipment to treat premature babies in the Hurley NICU. And most recently, working as part of a community group to create a job training program to help Flint residents increase their job skills so they can make more money. In regards to experience serving on boards, I'm a past member of the City of Burton Planning Commission, and I currently sit on the Genesee District Library Board, and I'm also on a statewide board, parent leadership in state government. I am motivated to run because of three very important people in my life, my wife, my daughter and my mother. Um, first and foremost, my wife is a faculty member at my, she teaches in the communications department for over a decade. And she has shared with me over the years, the student experience. And so I have a strong understanding of what today's students need in regards to support from the college, along with assistance to ensure they complete their degree. My daughter is a future bear. The decisions we make today will create the college that she will attend in the future. And lastly, the experience of my mother, she, transformed her career by attending a community college. Well, I was young in elementary school. She attended a two-year program where she went from being an LPN to a registered nurse. And because of her hard work and dedication and that sacrifice, it allowed us to lead a solid middle-class lifestyle, which leads me into my perspective on Mott's mission. And ultimately, I'm not going to reread the Mott's mission, but what really captures my piece is Mott's commitment to affordable education to individuals who want to transform their life. And I see ultimately MOD as a catalyst for individuals who want to make that choice. And ultimately, MOD is at an excellent crossroads of ICE 475 and 69 for individuals locally, but we're also digitally a top 100 you know, institution that can be accessible to individuals from across the country. And with that, I'm very thankful for this opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Johns, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Raphael Turner. So for, first of all, I'd just like to thank uh, Mott Community College, the students uh, for hosting uh, this forum. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Summer, uh, for moderating this panel. Uh, and thank you to all the panelists uh, who, are, who are on today. Uh, look forward to, to a great information session here. Uh, my name is Raphael Christopher Turner, uh, and I'm running for the Mott Community College Board of Trustees. Uh, because I believe that I'm the most qualified candidate uh, for the Mott Community College Board of Trustees. I previously served on this board uh, for seven years, uh, and some of my accomplishments during my tenure as an MCC trustee uh, include voting to bring the Lenora Crowdy Family Life Center uh, to Mott's main campus, and also uh, voting and advocating to expand Mott's footprint uh, in downtown Flint by expanding the culinary arts program and doing a build out uh, in downtown of our new culinary arts building in downtown. Uh, professionally, I have over 20 years uh, in both government and philanthropy. Uh, I've represented Mott Community College and served as an advocate for our nation's community colleges uh, as an executive board member uh, for the Association of Community College Trustees, uh, which is ACCT. Uh, my educational background, I have a master's degree in public administration from the University of Michigan Flint. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University, uh, and I have an honorary associate's degree from Mott Community College. I'm running for trustee because I believe uh, in the mission of Mott Community College, and my platform is equity, access, and affordability uh, to improve the overall quality of life uh, in our multicultural community. With our multicultural community in mind, I realized that African-American students make up the largest minority group 
of students uh, for Mott's, uh, in Mott's student body. Therefore, uh, I believe it's unacceptable that currently there's not a single black trustee on Mott's board in 2020. So I'm again running to ensure that this is not the case moving forward. I remain committed uh, to Mott Community College as I've co-chaired a successful 2020 Say Yes to MCC Millage campaign. Uh, I also currently serve on the board for the foundation of Mott Community College uh, and have performed and, and raised money over the years uh, in the annual and premier fundraiser uh, for the foundation, which is the Mott Motown and more. Uh, and I know many of you have experienced that uh, and saw that take place and it's a great fundraiser for the college. Uh, just in closing, personally, uh, you know, I'm a husband, uh, a father uh, who has some future uh, Mott Bears uh, to be. Uh, I'm a minister uh, in the community at Word of Life Christian Church. Uh, I'm a lifelong advocate of Flint and Genesee County. Uh, and I've been a champion uh, for Mott Community College specifically over the last decade. Uh, I've developed some wonderful uh, personal relationships and friendships uh, within the campus community uh, that span from the students uh, to faculty and staff at Mott Community College. Uh, and I believe that, you know, education is the way to change the world. All students should have access to the transformational uh, education and learning opportunities that happen at Mott Community College. All right, Mr. Turner, you have to leave it at that. You're out of time. Summer? Next up, we'd like to hear from Mr. David Lossing. Great. Thank you, uh, Summer. Uh, and... Uh, Matt from ABC 12 News for hosting the forum today. Uh, my name is David Lossie and I'm running for one of the open seats on the college's board of trustees. But a little bit about myself first. Uh, currently, I'm working as a vice president at Vanguard Public Affairs in Lansing, Michigan. I uh, previously worked at the University of Michigan for 16 years on both the Ann Arbor and Flint campuses in government relations. I was an adjunct uh, lecturer at U of M's Ann Arbor uh, School of Education for eight years, teaching undergraduate uh, degree classes. And then prior joining the university, I was on the staff of uh, U.S. Senator Carl Levin, uh, where I served for nearly nine years running two of his congressional offices. I've been an elected official myself. I served my community as a city council member and as the mayor of Linden for 12 years. Uh, so I understand what it takes to be an elected official. In terms of community service, I'm a former board member of the Community Foundation in Greater Flint. Currently serve on the Fenton Community Fund of CFGF. I'm the former president of the Michigan Municipal League based in Ann Arbor, which represents 554 cities and villages across our great state. And I served as the president of the International Town Gown Association based in Clemson, South Carolina. Uh, in addition to that, uh, kind of personally, 12, uh, eight years ago, I was a stem cell donor through the Be the Match program, uh, in which I donated 350 million stem cells to a recipient in Wales uh, that was suffering from leukemia. Uh, educationally, I graduated from Mod in 1984 with an Associates of Arts degree. I was involved in student government in the student newspaper. Uh, for those of you that are longtime employees of Mod, you may remember Cy Leader was our advisor at that time. I met uh, my wife at Mod uh, back in 1983, and tomorrow we're celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary, and she's gone on to earn five associate degrees from Mod Community College. Uh, I've earned a bachelor's, a master's, and an education specialist degree from the University of Michigan Flint. I'm a fellow of the Michigan Political Leadership Program at Michigan State University and currently a PhD candidate at Indiana State University in higher education leadership. Uh, additionally, I've been endorsed uh, in this uh, campaign so far by our Congressman Dan Kildee, uh, four members of the current Board of Trustees, Michael Freeman, Art Reyes, Sally Shaheen Joseph, and Dr. John Snell. Uh, State Representatives Tim Sneller and Cheryl Kennedy, uh, five members of the Genesee County Board of Commissioners, Bryant Nolden, Martin Cousineau, uh, Alan Ellenberg, Mark Young, and Ted Henry, as well as Genesee County Treasurer Deb Cherry. And in summation, I'm, I'm running because I'm a lifelong learner and a longtime educator. I've become a community expert be th uh, through my service to the City of London and the MML and through various activities here in Genesee County. I understand higher education like the back of my hand. I'm an experienced public servant and an environmental steward on top of all that. So I appreciate the opportunity to, to share my views about why I want to be a tr trustee today uh, with the audience. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Lonsky, thank you so much. And for our final opening statement is going to come from Anu Patak. Good 
Greetings, everyone. I am Anupa Todd. Many people know me as an educator, a mother, and a member of your community. Now I'm ready to take my vision of quality education to campaign for a seat on my community college board of trustees. I have taken on this challenge of running for a seat because supporting and promoting educational programs and activities at Mott Community College and raising funds for the benefit of the college while promoting academic excellence is important to me. I promise I will bring community-minded leadership to the job. All my life, I've wanted to be able to give back to my community. And while I love to teach, I have always felt that I can do more. I grew up in the College Cultural Center, just about five miles from the college. I come from a background of educators. Both of my parents were college professors and taught for MCC. I used to go to the college when I was a kid and play professor on the chalkboard in the classrooms when they were done. I have been an educator for over 20 years as an elementary school teacher, an assistant principal, and a professor teaching education and early childhood education. I started my educational career right at Mott Community College, receiving my associate's degree in early childhood education, and then receiving my bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Michigan in early childhood education. I am the previous development and marketing specialist for the Foundation for Mott Community College, working on numerous projects to support Mott Community College's mission of having affordable classes for students. I am a precinct delegate. I serve on the YWCA board. I've been appointed to the Genesee County Land Bank Citizens Advisory Board. I also am a patient ambassador for Sessions Genesis, and I am active in my sorority of Delta Sigma Theta. I help produce Mott Motown and more. I serve on Mott Alumni Association Board. I'm a woman in education member for the Foundation for Mott Community College. I am a content team co-chair for the Mott Bear Connect. I love to stay connected to Mott, and I will bring that knowledge and experience to the job. As the Vice President of the Genesee County Neighborhood Watch, safety for our students and residents is my top priority. I plan to work with law officials to ensure safety at the college and Genesee County. As the press president of the Rotary Club of Grand Blanc, I plan to connect with community members to bring ideas for our students and community. As the vice as the, as, excuse me, as the past vice president of the India Club, I plan to expand knowledge of our cultures to our students and community. I stand for the mission of Mott Community College, providing high quality, accessible, and affordable educational opportunities, like small class sizes, professors that care, and an abundance of choices in classes, as I received when I attended. Services and that cultivate student access were always available on campus, like when I was on student council. The availability of, of individual development was just a walk to the Prof Center to speak with a counselor. I really right, enjoyed- We're gonna have to leave it there. We're at time right okay. now, so sorry. Hopefully we can work okay. that in a little bit later. Candidates, okay. thank you so much for your, uh, for your opening statements, and I'll turn it over to Summer. Now that we've learned a bit more about you, we'd like to ask several questions about how you plan to have a positive impact on our campus and community alike. For our at-home audience, don't forget to utilize our email, QS, the number four, candidate at mcc.edu. To ask our candidates questions for the live portion of our forum. We'll begin now with three pre-written questions and each candidate will have two minutes to respond. After the two minutes are up, we'll move on to the next candidate. First, we'll have Ms. Anupa Todd after, to after Matt has presented you with the question. Take it away, Matt. All right. Ms. Todd, higher education institutions, well, they have been facing declining enrollments for the past few years, and the COVID-19 pandemic certainly has not helped at all, and it has exacerbated this trend, particularly at the community college level. What adjustments do you think Mott needs to make in order to address this? Thank you, Matt. The first thing we should do is to continue with MCC's five-phase reopening plan, offering virtual learning options for students, such as online, hybrid, and eventually face-to-face -face with PPE. Once it is safe to return to campus, 
once it's re um, safe to return to campus. Now, I have actual experience in implementing these teaching styles as an instructor. I've had this experience for many years before the pandemic made it necessary. We also want to provide ongoing technology training for students and staff. You want to have online tutor services available for students in math writing and foreign languages to ensure their ongoing success. In addition, another way Mott can offer rolling admissions to prospective students. MCC can evaluate applications as they come in, as long as students have applied, taken the appropriate placement test, and registered for classes by the start date. They would be able to start the semester. Another way MCC can adopt is um, adapt to regional job market fluctuations and rapidly changing enrollment is to be able to partner with local businesses to create relevant curricula to produce graduates that are best suited for the region's labor market demands by having student internships and possible jobs upon graduation. Also for students who may be at risk, MCC offers a way to start college while living at home, which may be safer for the students. You can transfer later and still get the university degrees you seek. This path was the path that I took while receiving my associate's degree in early childhood and an associate's arts for transfer degree to the University of Michigan. Thank you. All right, Ms. Todd, thank you so much. Summer. David, Law Mr. David Lossing, we have the same question for you. Great, thanks, Summer. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly we did not expect a worldwide pandemic uh, to occur 10 months ago, but that is unfortunately become our new normal. Uh, just as this candidate forum would have normally been held face to face, uh, we are doing it virtually and literally we're all working virtually now, either from the college or from high schools uh, around the country, basically. Uh, but, you know, COVID's had a couple of impacts and not only COVID itself, but uh, Michigan itself has been suffering from a declining birth rate. Uh, for the last decade or longer, so which basically means, in a sense, we have to be more, uh, we have to be smarter and more strategic about recruiting not only in district uh, students but out of district students. And the impact COVID has had so far this year, according to the National Student Clearing Re Research Center from last week, is that enrollment at community colleges is down 22.7 percent across the country. And Mata announced last month uh, that the enrollment this fall was down 17%. So that has a huge financial impact on the budget for the college as well. But if you look at where Genesee County is situated, we touch on four different counties that do not have a community college within their borders. And that's Shiawassee, Lapeer, Livingston, and, and Tuscola counties. Now we have a footprint in Lapeer and Livingston, but not in Shiawassee or Tuscola. And in reviewing you know, what we charge or what the college charges is out of district students to attend Mott, we've got the second lowest rate of our six competitors that are within an hour's drive time. So that includes St. Clair County Community College, Washtenaw, Lansing, Oakland, and Delta College just north of us in Saginaw County. So if we do some strategic targeting on students in Tuscola, Shiawassee, plus the other two counties, we could additionally Uh, the loss of enrollment this year that we've seen. You know, and funding is always a big part of this too. So community colleges are funded with three pots of money. One is the tuition, uh, two are going to be local property taxes that are collected, and third is going to be state appropriations. Well, the, the legislature Robert, just passed their budget. Mr. Lawson, we're going to have to cut you off. I'm sorry. You, that, that's time. Not a problem. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Turner, you, uh, you're up next. What adjustments do you think Mott needs to make in order to address the declining enrollment? due to COVID-19? Uh, sure, I think uh, first, um, I think to continue uh, their work as advocating to expand the number of high school and dual enrolled students um, that are able to take MOTS classes. Um, you know, as many of you know or may not know that Mott Community College uh, was one of the first community colleges in the nation uh, to introduce early college programs. Uh, and so dual enrollment uh, is, has really been a key factor in softening that blow of, you know, of the national trends of declining enrollment. And so, you know, I would definitely support, uh, you know, doubling down and, and ramping up the opportunity um, to, to move forward in that area. And as, um, you know, David mentioned, we, we touch, you know, the four, the four counties. And so we can bring in those students from all four counties um, in the community college service area. 
Second, uh, as a trustee, I would continue uh, to support uh, the skilled trades programs. I would support uh, certificate programs and also stackable credentials. Uh, many of our students come to our campus as heads of households, and so they need to have an immediate impact on their household income. And so we need to create ways that students can get in fast and, and exit with the credential or the training that they need to have an impact right now on their family income. And then third, you know, looking forward into the future that some, some community colleges in other states have already moved forward in offering uh, four-year bachelor's degree programs. And I'm not saying that, you know, we need to get into the space of what the universities are doing, but when we talk about our most in-demand programs and the programs that are most needed in Flint and Genesee County, uh, there are certain programs that I think that we could offer the four-year on uh, right on Mott's campus in the future uh, and have a great impact and also be able to bolster uh, enrollment in that way. Thank you, Matt. All right, Mr. Turner, thank you so much. Now we would like to hear from uh, Mr. Johns uh, on the question of what adjustments do you think Mott needs to make in order to address declining enrollment because of the COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you very much for the chance to answer this question. And I want to hit on really three important points. The first one, as previously mentioned, is to build off the current partnerships. Um, Mott has partnered with larger high schools, but there is an opportunity to connect with smaller, both urban, suburban, and rural school districts to be able to provide classes virtually or even in hybrid that allow students that may not have the opportunity to do the coursework to be able to come to Mott virtually and do that work. Um, next, also looking at from the K through 12 side, also looking at just partnering with employers because as has been mentioned, COVID-19 has really forced workers to learn a new set of skills. And if we can better understand the needs of employers, we can ultimately create curriculum that can match that. And also on the skilled trades, um, I have a, a close relationship with operating engineers and laborers, and both of them have very large training centers within a 45 minute drive of main campus. Um, two organizations like Operating Engineers 324 and Laborers 1075, the more prepared an pr apprentice can be before they apply for the program, the better a chance that apprentice will have for success. And Mott can be a key provider of pre-apprenticeship skills that will guarantee those students have a long and rewarding career. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. John, thank you so much. And finally, Mr. John Daly, uh, you have two minutes to answer the question about how to curb declining enrollment at Mott Community College due to the pandemic. First of all, I think that uh, Mott has to continue uh, providing the quality of education that it has in the uh, past to the Genesee County community, and also continue to have that balance between practical application and theory. Uh, that's gonna be critical in the days ahead. Again, as we're positioned in the county, we have to take advantage of the fact that the fourth industrial revolution is upon us, and we're going to have to expand both in depth and scope into technical areas that we haven't been into before. If we're going to increase numerically the number of students that are enrolled in my community, we also have to be sure that we retain the quality of student that's coming into the program as well. And we're going to have to do things differently. The classic definition that's used for stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Some of the things that we're going to have to do differently are going to be to not only go out and recruit, but also assist, particularly in high schools, with in preparation for students to come in and uh, be uh, effective students in the program. For a student, their most important commodity that they have in the program is time. Everything is competing for their time, their family life, their work life, which we'll, we'll see more and more students that will not be the traditional student that comes in and only goes to school and goes home and studies and does some other things. We're gonna have more and more students and they will, that will be working as they go to school. They will also be older. We need to make a, an outreach, particularly into the minority communities here in Genesee County, bring up the numbers uh, from, of students that are coming from 
both the uh, African American community and the Hispanic community, as well All as right, the Mr. Taylor, we're going to have to leave it at that this time. All right, just as a reminder too to our people, our viewing audience at home, Janet Couch and Michael Sitkovich are not uh, joining us today this afternoon, so uh, they cannot answer that question. Summer. Thank you, Matt. For our next question, Mott's most recent strategic plan emphasized the role that the college plays in the local community and set forth specific action items aimed at increasing our presence in the community at large. How do you conceive of Mott's role in the community and what steps do you think the institution should take towards that end? To begin, we would like to have Mr. Lossing answer that question. Great, thanks, Summer. Uh, as I mentioned as part of my intro, I was I served as the president of what's called the International Town Gown Association. It's that link between the town where the college is situated and the gown, which is the, the college itself. And it's about building relationships between the key executive officers of the college with their counterparts in the community. And in reading through the strategic plan, it calls for, you know, building those relationships within Genesee County. Uh, but I believe, that, you know, we should also have an additional emphasis to reach out to those communities in Lapeer, Livingston, Shiawassee, and Tuscola County. Uh, it's a way of connecting Mott to a much broader region uh, so that we'll have a really a good firsthand knowledge about what their needs are from a business sense, from a governmental sense, healthcare sense, so we know where we could place students potentially uh, that are earning those degrees at, at Mott that will play a role in those future uh, communities and, and corporations. And it's a way to, you know, hopefully uh, uh, increase the enrollment uh, at the college from those communities as well. So town and gown is a really important relationship builder because you always have to have uh, that connection between the president of the college and the mayor of those communities uh, because without it, you know, uh, all sorts of bad things can happen and uh, the whole idea behind town and gown is prevent that from occurring. So thank you very much. All right, Mr. Daly. All right, Mr. Daly, the question goes now to you. How do we increase the uh, presence of my community college in our community. I think that the strategic plan, which takes us through 2021, uh, is certainly a, provides some specific tasks that they want to accomplish. Uh, one of the things that I would like to see as we move forward into doing a new strategic plan for 2022 and the period beyond is looking at what, uh, how do we measure this accomplishment? Uh, we talk about it, uh, there's a lot of emphasis on relationship with the community, but that needs to be a measurable goal so that we can, so the, both members of the community and the college can see that there is progress that's going on. The relationship between the community, and I would use the largest extent of community, not only Genesee County, but also our surrounding neighbor counties, as well as professional communities abroad that we're going to try to attract to the Mott Community College uh, student body, those all have to, we all have to build relationships with. Them. The future is going to be one of relationships and alliances between the business community and the education community to produce students that are well educated and well trained to take high paying jobs and leadership positions in the coming uh, industrial revolution that we're going to go through here in Genesee County. Mr. Daly, thank you so much. Summer? Um, next, we'd like to hear Mr. Turner's response to the question of how do you conceive Mott's role in the community and what steps do you think our institution should take towards that end? Thank you, Summer. Um, I consider Mott Community College to be an anchor institution uh, for our community. Um, it has been said that education is an ornament and prosperity and a refuge in adversity. The Flint and Genesee County community, our community college region has seen more than its fair share uh, of adversity. From the economic crisis to the Flint water crisis, and now in the middle of the uh, COVID-19 global health crisis. I believe Mott uh, has been and will continue to be at the forefront of providing service learning projects uh, that are geared towards increasing Mott's presence 
every department on Mott's campus uh, has been seen doing great work and really being connected uh, to the campus community and to the broader community where all of our uh, campuses reside. We've seen work from our health science department to uh, the Department of Arts, Entertainment and Technology, to our Department of Public Safety, all, all have contributed to make sure that our communities where our students are learning are healthier, are more visible and safer as a result of MOP's involvement within the community. As a trustee, I would continue to urge the college's administration to further take steps to work with the governor to implement uh, the program Futures for Frontliners, the program for essential workers and frontline workers to have a tuition-free path to community college, and also to ensure that funding is available for uh, those that are in the medical field, essential manufacturing, those that are working at grocery stores and in sanitation and other fields that are essential frontline workers that could not take time off or be away from work during COVID-19. And we have to make sure that they get the wages that they deserve and they have the career pathways that will sustain them moving forward. And I think we can play that essential role. And as trustees, we can be advocates for those programs to really make sure those things come, come through for our students. Thank you. All right, Mr. Turner, thank you so much. Anil Patad, you're up next two minutes to your response on how to increase the presence of Mott Community College. Thank you, Matt. Under the College and Community Sustainability Goal number 11, it still expands Mott's presence in the community by creating volunteer activities annually for employees in the Flint and Genesee County. This can be done by student recruiting from Mott College at the local high school school, excuse me, at the local high school and around the world online. Under goal 12, we want to increase community engagement and communication on educating the community and value success and services of the college with having presence at the local events to promote the attributes that the college has. So, for example, the Ride Up Below Roger Gopal Student Life Center, which was dedicated by my family to Mott College students. This will provide an opportunity for growth, expression of their creativity creating their heritage and network with other students while making new friends. Thank you. Thank you very much. And last, we have, um, we have Mr. Johns to answer the question of Mott's role in the community and the steps the institution should take towards that end. Thank you very much. You know, as previously mentioned, MCC is perfectly located at I-475 and 69, making it easily accessible for individuals from across our area to use the existing environment for programming and also to access campus resources. Um, as a board member, I'd build off my experience with Flint Recast, a large federally funded grant that was run through by Dr. Vicki Johnson Lawrence, where we work to build resiliency in the community. And what I learned from that was, to get impact, to get information back from the community, ultimately you give them the microphone, you let them talk, you take notes, and you implement what they want. And I, I work very closely with a number of community organizations and space is a big issue, you know, access to technology, and ultimately my has this in spades. And I would encourage just being able to provide the space and also, you know, partnering with larger community organizations throughout Flint, like the R.L. Jones Community Outreach Center, the North Flint Reinvestment Corporation, large organizations that are doing the outreach that have programming and ultimately want to partner. And, you know, the first piece is, I, is just really is asking the community for what they want to. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Johns, thank you so much for that. Uh, it's time now to move on to our next question, which is Mont is committed to creating a student-centered environment that prioritizes student success. What do you think are the biggest challenges our students face and what role do you think members of the Board of Trustees play in fostering student success? Uh, and Ms. Couch was supposed to have the first uh, question, it was supposed to have the question first, but now we're going to go on to Mr. Raphael Turner. Thanks, Matt. Um, I believe that trustees should be about the work of removing barriers for our students. Many students show up at Mott Community College and community college all across the nation with great insecurities. And I'm not referring to 
personal insecurities, lack of confidence, or lack of scholastic confidence or ability, I'm referring to social insecurities. These social insecurities range from housing insecurity to financial insecurity uh, to even you know unreliable transportation. One of the things I worked very hard to, to bring to campus was the Lenora Crowdy Family Life Center. Uh, Lenora Crowdy was my lifetime friend and a mentor of mine. And so to have a center on campus that can address you know, housing needs or uh, address the lack of affordable childcare or address needs like uh, clothing or being prepared to go into an interview uh, right there as a resource on campus are, are very important for our students. And so as a trustee, you know, I really believe that our work is to, to be an advocate, you know, for the college, to be an advocate for our students and do whatever is in our power to remove barriers that our students may show up with. Because I believe that we have the best and brightest students that show up at MOP. Uh, we know that we're a, a top 10 uh, community college in the nation. So we know that we give a great educational opportunity uh, for the students that come to us. And so we have to advocate for them to remove all those barriers that get in the way of completion. And so that will be, uh, that has been my goal as a trustee previously, and that will continue to be my goal is to advocate for students and help them to remove those barriers to learning. All right, Mr. Turner, thank you so much. Summer. Next, we'd like to hear from uh, Mr. Lossing on the same question of the biggest challenges faced by students and the role that the Board of Trustees plays in student success. Thank you, Summer. Yeah, I think, you know, kind of teeing off of what Raphael just said, obviously a Board of Trustee member is going to have to support the college itself and its staff and faculty to do the hard work of driving up uh, retention rates and graduation rates. Now, for the audience, retention rate basically is kind of the, the forest from the trees. You know, how, you know, those students that enroll this fall, you know, how many of those can we retain to re-enroll in fall of 2021? And to do that, you have to have the, the funding available to the different departments on campus and the faculty to really mentor those students through their classes uh, so that they can earn the A's and the B's and so forth to re-enroll in the next semester. And MOT's current retention rate now is 60% for full-time and 45% for part-time students, which, you know, when you look at our competitors, and those uh, six other community colleges, which is very similar. Uh, and the goal uh, that the college has set forth is to increase uh, retention by 5% uh, over the next two years, which is going to be a, a good lift. Uh, it's going to require everybody on, on the campus to step up and working together and putting in systems in place that can track student performance uh, to make sure that they're hitting their benchmarks so that they can graduate. And the other side of this is the graduation rate. You know, that's, it's tracked over a three-year period, basically, and it's how many students or percentage of the population graduate with an associate's degree. Uh, right now, it's 15%. Uh, the goal is to drive that up by 5% or even 8% by 2021. That's going to require an awful lot of work with everybody pulling together, but I think the college has laid out an, an excellent uh, strategic plan that will, if funded correctly, will help drive those end results so we can drive up the number of students that are graduating because we do need college degrees to be able to survive in today's economies. It's the, we don't have the old GM mindset coming back. It's all about uh, knowledge and service. So thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lawson. Uh, Mr. Daly, you're up next with uh, two minutes on uh, what are the biggest challenges our students face and what role do you think the Board of Trustees play in fostering that student success? The role of the board is, is an oversight role and what we do, what the board does is it's going to approve policy, set strategic goals, ensure alignment through the budgetary process and then follow through with the evaluation principally of the president to ensure that the university of the college is moving along those goals. When I was at the University of Alaska, I spent two years work as a faculty member, but one of my other responsibilities was student advisement. And the most critical things that I think students undergo stress-wise is competition for their time, and the second is financial stress. And we need to form a team that can mentor students, incoming students, 
not only during their first semester here, but probably during the first year they're here, during the critical time when they're developing their study habits and putting uh, their work to complete a, a longer term program. We need to have a clearinghouse because many times the student will be familiar with the problem, but they won't know where to go with it. And we need one of the things that I'll be a strong advocate for is the establishment of a clearinghouse that will deal with where students can go with a problem and they can get directed to the appropriate agency uh, at the college to seek to find relief and uh, set and resolve the problem. We clearly have to continue working to provide the safe academic environment. Mott Community College has a very strong support team in both its administrative and support staff. We will need to work even closer together to satisfy the needs of the students as they come to the college, both in the recruiting process and the retention process. We also need to look at students as they're moving through the program and mentor them into an output program. In other words, where do you go? Where do you plan to go for Mott once you've enrolled in pursuing All right. your associates? Mr. Daly, to, see, to cut you off, but that, that is our time. Summer? Thank you. Anupa, we have the same question for you about the biggest challenges our students face and the role that the board plays in fostering student success. You Thank have you the same amount of time. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Summer. While well, time spent at a college is supposed to be a fond memory and a happy experience for most, I know student life is not without its rough patches. Everyone's situation is unique. As a college professor, this very subject has came up with my students. I am always on hand to assist my students, and as a trustee, I will personally be present like I am now for my college students. College students may be concerned with what college has to offer, how they're going to maintain their life balancing family, work, and school, and concerned with what the workforce expectations upon graduation may be. As a trustee, I will work in cooperation with MCC faculty and staff at the college to initiate three workshops per academic year. The first one will be how to be a successful college student. I want to work with other board members and the faculty and staff to provide these workshops on an introduction to college experiences and expectations. The workshops will include topics on what to expect in a college classroom, how to have time management um, with classes and forming productive study, study habits with groups. The second one will be services for students to help with family and lifelong mental and health care services. I want to work with other board members and faculty and staff to create workshops on topics to help them balance their family, school, and work. And how they balance their college career. Guest speakers will share tips on mental health and self-care strategies. The third one will be an exit strategy. I want to work with other board members and faculty and staff to create workshops to help students prepare for the workforce. There will be mock interviews and invitations to our MCC board members along with local businesses to prepare students both in appropriate attire for job interviews, communication skills, and written resumes. Thank you. All right, Ms. Todd, thank you so much. And finally, uh, the question is now being posed to Mr. Chris Johns. You have two minutes to respond. You know, respond to this question. You know, ultimately, as previously mentioned, I think the biggest challenge for individuals or students is just the, the lack of a support system. So many of MCC students are first in their generation person or family to go to college. And so with that struggle, without having a support network at home, and then also now in this COVID-19 environment, um, really being forced to learn online. And I think as a part of that, also balancing the needs of their family as well as being a student. And I think one of the more important things the board can do is just making a number of, of guarantees to students. And the first one is ensuring access to core courses at satellite campuses and online. And then the next one is the guaranteed running of higher level courses to ensure the ease of transferability of credits to four-year institutions. And then last one, being able to help students go from being students to graduates, guaranteeing the running of courses required to complete a degree at Mott Community College. And as previously mentioned, you know, just the tremendous work that's being done at the Lenora Crowdy Family Life Center um, as, you know, schools do so much more than just educate today. Um, 
it's addressing needs from food to Wi-Fi and the Family Life Center will continue to do that. And I'd like to close with so much credit should go to Dr. Beverly for listening to students. She's, you know, in her tenure, she's had convened students, she's listened, and she's taken so much of that feedback and put it into practice on campus. Thank you very much. Mr. Johns, thank you very much. Thank you to all of our candidates for uh, answering those questions. It's time now to uh, take some questions from our, uh, from our viewers. Pardon my finger as I pull up the question. <laughs> the very first question is for all of our candidates. And it goes, I'm interested to know what each candidate is doing to earn the support of voters. And we'll go back in the order from question one, and we'll start with uh, Ms. Anupatad. You have two minutes to answer that question. Okay, so um, can you repeat that question? I believe you were asking, "What are we doing to get from one, voter from, support?" Yes, yeah, yeah, from one of the from one of our uh, audience members, they would like to know. I'm how, interested how to how know getting, what each okay. candidate is doing to earn the support of voters. Okay, so in this time, it is um, it, this is an unprecedented time to do campaigning. There is an event. Um, door knocking is a little bit hard. So trying to be involved as much as you can uh, via social media is really the, the way that I'm going with a lot of the things. And then when I can be present for different events, I will be. Um, I think the most important thing is to let people know as a candidate that I am educated. I have experience um, sitting on boards and also serving on boards. My community involvement goes from being a patient volunteer at the hospital to Make, um, to workshops with the big brothers, big sisters, and even with my college when they have their how to be successful in a college classroom for their prep orientation for college students. I think it's also important to have endorsements. And I also am endorsed by Tim Sneller and Cheryl and Michael Freeman and Art, John and Sally, who all sit on the board, Mark Young, who's the Genesee County Commissioner for District 5, the Mayor, Susan Soderstrom of Grand Blank, Carrie Edwards Clemens, who is the Flint Fire Chief, Dr. Bobby McCamela, Marcia Garcia, who also sits with me on the NCC Alumni Association Board, Dr. Neil Impurum, and also Lauren Coney, who is an Audience Development and Guest Service Coordinator. I think the most important thing is to know that your work as you've been doing for a while to prepare yourself for this is the most important thing. So making sure that the people know what kind of things I've been doing is really important. To prepare for this board position, I took a summer class on parliamentary procedure, to, and now I'm a member of the National Association of Parliamentarians. So I'm thinking this is the way to go in this type of society, to do as much as you can and to be present so people know that you're not just talking the talk, but you're walking the walk as well. Thank you. All right. Ms. Todd, thank you very much. Now for Mr. Lossing, we pose the same question in how you earn voter support. Yeah, thanks, Summer. Yeah, this is, as Anopa said, uh, trying to campaign in a pandemic uh, is totally unexpected. Normally, in a normal election cycle like this for a countywide office, you would be doing a whole bunch of chicken dinners uh, at every nonprofit across the county and uh, handing out literature and putting up yard signs and so forth, knocking on doors. I know Chris has been out there knocking on doors around the county. Uh, but with the pandemic, you know, it's, it's a different ballgame because some people just don't want candidates knocking on their front door because of COVID. And, hey, I totally get that. Uh, I mean, I have asthma, so I have a compromised respiratory system, so I kind of avoid crowds as much as I can get away with, uh, especially when my wife and I go shopping. But we are reaching out to uh, targeted voters uh, on both Facebook ads and Google ads. Uh, right now, we're doing some targeted mailings as well, and I'm reaching out to my network of, of friends and professional uh, connections that I've, I've built up over the last 30 years uh, living here in Genesee County. So a lot of that is beginning to pay off. But, you know, you never know until November 3rd at 8 o'clock and after the results come in, if it will be successful. Uh, there's some great candidates running for the board this year. So, 
you know, I think the college is going to end up with two great uh, trustees uh, on November 3rd. Uh, I hope I'm one of them, obviously, uh, because I believe in my community college, its mission. And uh, that's where I began my academic career as a student. Ironically, this is the second time I've run for the Board of Trustees. The very first time was in 1983 when I was a student at Mott. And, and I ran, uh, didn't, you know, didn't campaign because I didn't really understand how campaigns ran at, as an undergrad. Uh, but I ended up with uh, well over 1,600 votes out of seven people. So, you know, it's always possible. You never know what's going to happen. So Mott is where I started, and this is my home, and I want to come back and, uh, you know, bring my expertise to bear with the Board of Trustees. Thank you. All right. Mr. Lossing? So you have uh, two minutes. What are you doing to earn the vote of voters in our area. Thanks, Matt. Well, I'm working hard uh, to earn the vote of voters in our area, um, doing it safely, uh, doing it at a social distance. But, you know, I'm community. I participated in, in voter forums. Uh, I have participated in, you know, obviously, you know, wearing a mask and again at a social distance, but doing walks uh, and cleanups in community you know, reaching out and, and helping residents with uh, neighborhood led projects. So working with uh, community organizer and neighborhood captains and leaders uh, to help with different activities that they're having in their community. One, uh, just to do the, the work that's needed in community, uh, because again, I'm an advocate uh, for Flint and Genesee County, but two, also just to have an opportunity uh, to get my message out and talk to residents. Uh, I continue to work uh, as a as a trustee for the community uh, the community foundation of Greater Flint, uh, where I am working uh, as a member of the governor's task force on racial disparities uh, in community. So continuing to lead that work to address uh, health disparities uh, and other things that have been exacerbated uh, by the COVID nineteen crisis. Uh, and then also just staying connected to students uh, during my time as a trustee and since I've been on the foundation board. Uh, I mentor a number of students uh, from my community college, uh, talking to, to them about career, talking to them things that are, you know, just life things that are may not be related, uh, you know, to, to career or to the college, uh, and just being a mentor and hearing, you know, from students and hearing what their concerns are uh, and what the needs and barriers are so we can help remove those barriers. And so just using social media, please visit me at Raphael Christopher Turner uh, on Facebook. Uh, check out the League of Women Voters. I have a host of uh, great endorsements. Uh, that are out there, endorsed by Congressman Dan Kildee, uh, Mayor Sheldon Neely, uh, just to name a few, uh, State Senator uh, Jim Ananick. Uh, but there's a ton of endorsements that you can check out at the League of Women, Women Voters Candidate Forum and also on my Facebook page as well. So just staying connected with the community and that, you know, that community work is what I do uh, all day, every day. All right. Mr. Turner, thank you very much. Now we would like to turn the question of voter support over to Mr. Johns. Thank you very much. Um, I'm excited to answer this question because my number one thing is I've been doing lid drops safely with a mask across the county and I put out 4,500 pieces of my literature under the doorknobs of houses ranging from the city of Flint to Montrose. And I've gotten an excellent response because number one, most candidates don't do the voter outreach. And number two, they've never had any candidate from my community college reach out to them. And in regards to, I'm also running Facebook ads. I'm also doing Google. But for me, hitting the doors is a demonstration that I'm willing to put in the time, the effort, and the sweat into serving students, faculty, and staff, and taxpayers of my community college. And so for myself, um, in regards to endorsements, I have bipartisan support. But the one I want to mention the most is Mr. Redmond, who lives on Bergen Street in Burton, um, he, uh, an older gentleman, and he and I had a wonderful talk for over a half hour, and it was just a case of, he had said to me, he had not really, with, because of COVID, had not talked to anybody in close to a month, and he has limited contact with his family, so our interaction, we talked about the Burton Dog Park, um, his dog, and for him, he said, please come back and talk to me, and I said, I, I definitely will do that, and that was just kind of an outreach of, of my hit, me hitting the doors, and so for, again, 4,500 pieces of literature under doors, and I've rented a scooter so I can scoot around neighborhoods throughout the county. But in conclusion, I've had a great response from individuals who say, we want to support a candidate who works hard to earn our vote. Thank you. Mr. Johns, thank you so much. I uh, just want to 
reflect that uh, Ms. Janet Couch is not here today, so she cannot answer that question. So the question will now go on to Mr. John Daly on your efforts to earn voter support. I agree with uh, my colleagues that are stating that, you know, that the impact of the COVID-19 virus has really manifested itself significantly in virtually all the political campaigns we're seeing it from the federal level all the way down to the local level. Uh, I've always operated under a uh, premise of that when you're selling something that you, you stand on uh, deeds, not words. And so my, the emphasis that I've used has been communicating with people and making them aware of my educational background, both as an administrator, as a teacher, and as a student, my service in public administration uh, at the county level and at the city of Flint level for the last 25 years in the city of Flint. And it's more a matter of making awareness for them that, that this is actually a new experience for me. This is the first time that I've actually run for public office. The, the rest, previously to this in my career, I've been an appointed official, so it's been a little different. But in talking with, pre, with prior electives, one of the departures I've seen that I'm using is the maximum use of social media and Facebook. Uh, those are important. So I have a very important uh, political advisor and my wife, Wendy Braun, and assistance and direction in that. But continuing to, to communicate with people and make them aware that it's the service that counts and you have to be able to perform the job. So. It's been an interesting uh, experience for me so far. Mr. Daly, thank you so much. Also, I'd like the record to reflect that uh, Michael Sitkovich is not joining us today. He is also, along with Ms. Couch, two of the other uh, candidates running for Board of Trustees. Summer, on to question two. All right. For this next question, we're going to address it's Matt is committed to creating a diverse, equitable, and inclusive campus environment. What role do you think diversity, equity, and inclusion plays in higher education? And if elected, how would you use your role as a trustee to cultivate these values at Mott Community College? Starting out, we would like to hear from Mr. Lawson. Right, thanks, Summer. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, it is very important that the, the enrollment at Mott Community College reflects the community it serves. Uh, because when those students do end up graduating either from Mott or from a four-year university and enter the workforce, they are going to be working with a diverse number of individuals from across the globe. Uh, we are, have become a global economy uh, over the last 10 to 15 years, and our enrollment has to reflect that uh, because it's a uh, it will help uh, those students, you know, reach a higher understanding of what it's like to walk in somebody else's shoe. Uh, during my uh, PhD program at Indiana State, we had to do a summer residency back in the tw in 2015. And one of the courses that was taught by my faculty member uh, was about racism in higher education. And it was a wonderfully uncomfortable conversation to have because my cohort uh, number 18 at ISU was a good mix of, of male and female, of white and people of color, uh, as well as Asian. And uh, the responses from my colleagues in that conversation really have break down our own barriers about what it means, you know, especially for me being a white man and the privilege that I carry with me, and then how to use that for good uh, for the public as a whole. Um, and it really opened my eyes uh, to what's going on. And obviously, I, I feel the pain through the Black Lives Movement uh, and what people of color have gone through. Uh, and so it's using that understanding as a trustee uh, to have new policies on campus that we can hopefully enforce to really diverse the, the student population. Uh, because the, in reality, we're working with everybody uh, in today's economy. We're doing this virtually over Zoom. And a lot of workplaces are doing the same thing. So you have to have that cultural understanding uh, to be able to work with your colleagues and to be effective. Thank so, you. Austin, thank you so much for that. Uh, on to Mr. Daly, the role that uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion play in higher education. And if you're elected, how you're going to use your role to cultivate these values at Mott. You have two minutes. The role of diversity 
and uh, racial inclusion particularly is, that it is a critical component of both our society and our economy. Uh, Jack Welch, when he was president of General Motors, has an, had an experience with a retiring worker where he was invited to the retiree's party and upon giving him a presentation, he had a few words with the retiree and the retiree after 35 years of service with uh, General Electric uh, said to uh, Jack Welch that you had me for 35 years, but all you had to do to have my brain was to ask. And the how you can have a, a highly effective and competitive society and organization and economy in today's environment without inclusion of everyone's experience and everyone's thought processes and brain power contributing to the solution uh, is uh, a goal that we all have to strive for. It's going to be critical in international trade and business to be able to utilize effectively all of the persons and from all of the backgrounds that come into our culture and into our businesses. As a board member, I would want to ensure that first of all, that, diversi that diversity and inclusion are uh, tenants with throughout my community college at all levels. And that, that frankly, that discrimination is something that will not be tolerated. Second, that I would want to ensure that you build a process for uh, eliminating those liabilities because they are both liabilities in both a cultural, legal, and financial sense. So I would want to work so closely with the administration to ensure the continuance of the programs that are already in place and to develop new and more effective communication programs that can break the barriers down between our uh, social factions. All right, Mr. Daly, thank you so much. Now we'd like to turn the question over to Mr. Turner on the role of diversity, equity, and inclusion in higher education and cultivating these values at Mott as a trustee. Yeah, thank you, Summer. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I'm running because I, I believe it's important uh, to have uh, a black trustee, an African-American trustee represented on the board at Mott Community College. Um, we bring uh, to this board is a, is a lived experience. Uh, we've all you know, sat home and watched over the news and what's happened over this year uh, with the killings of George Floyd, uh, Amir Arbery, uh, Breonna Taylor, uh, and seeing how uh, anti-Black racism uh, and uh, systemic uh, injustice has, has played out right before our very eyes. Uh, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, life and death. Uh, so, you know, I think it's important to have that lived experience on our board uh, and to be represented and have a seat at the table uh, on the board of my community college uh, trustees. Uh, as it relates to equity, uh, equity also means that all students get what they need. And so uh, again, seeing my role as someone to remove barriers for our students, uh, that's not, you know, not just for our black students, but all of our students, making sure that we're having equitable outcomes, that any student that comes to the door, uh, that comes to a classroom at Mott Community College, gets what they need to get through uh, and to complete and, and to get that degree or certi certificate that they're seeking out. Um, as it relates to, to inclusion, uh, I'm very proud of what Mott has done uh, to assist our students with disabilities, uh, particularly uh, in the autism community. Uh, as a father of a son uh, who, is, uh, who has autism spectrum disorder, uh, to see the supports that need to happen for individuals that have disabilities uh, and, and various needs to, be, to see them supported and included uh, in the academic process. And so those things are, are near and dear to my heart uh, diversity, uh, equity, inclusion is what I'm about uh, on all three of those levels. I have a live ex lived experience, uh, and I'll bring that lived experience to the Board of Trustees. Mr. Turner, thank you very much. Ms. Todd, you have two minutes to respond to the question. Thank you, Matt. I just remember myself growing up and going to college and I was the only minority in most of my classes. And as I had attained more of an education that became limited and it was just me, um, sometimes the places that I'm in now, even the boards I serve, I see myself as the only person of color. So it is important that we need to strengthen the challenges of diversity, 
and the stereotypes that we have these misconceptions about people. It is important that as the board of trustee also reflects the diversity of our community, we need to see ourselves so that people can relate to us is when there are many diverse uh, opinions, better decisions will be made. We need to have this in place at the college. Expertise must be combined with the willingness to listen and learn. Thank you. All right, Ms. Todd, thank you very much. Summer? Thank you. Now we pose the same question on diversity and inclusion in higher education and cultivating these values. We turn that question over to Mr. Johns. Thank you very much for the opportunity to answer this question. I would like to first say, you know, MCC is taking distinct steps to meet this and most likely really with the latest advertising campaign, you see faces of our students from across the county reflected in the media campaign, whether it be on a billboard, on Facebook or on television, you see the students who interact with Mott College. And I think from that, there's opportunities from the urban to the rural districts just to continue to open the door and do what Mott does best, which is be a welcoming environment for students and faculty and staff. In my past experience working with Flint Recast and so many of the community organizations I, I'm with have taken me to all corners of the county. And I think ultimately being able to have a better understanding of what those experiences are and going back to one of my previous responses is, you know, giving the microphone back and letting the community reflect on inform what they need and what they want to see in terms of programming and on these policies. And I think ultimately it's just asking the community, how can Mott be more inclusive? They have the answer and it's ultimately us the challenge for the board to listen and enact policies and procedures that take advantage of that. And again, Genesee County um, at roughly 400,000 people is a community rich in diversity and might just should continue to strive to reflect that. And, you know, in conclusion, my, in my opinion, is, is doing so much and is, gets an A-plus from me in regards to what it's doing to publicly display its openness. It just needs to continue and, and invite individuals to share their voice. Thank you. Mr. Johns, thank you very much. And again, the question would have been posed to Michael Zipkovich and also Janet Couch, however they were invited, but they uh, weren't able to participate in the forum today. Uh, our final question today, as we start to uh, wind down, what do you think is Mott's greatest How would you address the weakness? Uh, we will now start in the order beginning with Mr. Raphael Turner. Thank you, Matt. Um, I think Mott's greatest strength, uh, again, is our students. Uh, we have amazing students that come to our campus. Uh, they come to our campus ready to learn, uh, and they come to our campus with a heart to contribute to our community. And we can see that every time by the students that sign up to do service learning projects, to do projects within our campus communities to help out, uh, whether it's related to, to healthcare, uh, to the SMILE project, to the anti-bullying project, uh, to those students that are coming to be a part of Mott's uh, Law Enforcement Academy. Uh, we see those students that while they're going through to get their degree, to get their credentials, uh, to, to help improve their uh, economic uh, you know, mobility and increase their household income, they're also, they also come with the heart to serve. So our greatest asset is our students, our world-class faculty and staff uh, that are really providing transformational learning opportunities uh, on the campus. You know, so I just think we need to just continue to bolster that to make sure everyone has the supports they need uh, so we can continue to move forward. Uh, I believe that uh, a weakness is that, you know, in, in some, some regards, you know, with all the, the great marketing that we do that Mott uh, and learning institutions in our community, right? So we just need to, to, to double down, uh, to get the word out. Um, we know that, um, you know, student loan debt is, is one of the great drivers economic uh, gap that we see in our community. And so the, to come to my community college, get a world-class education at an affordable rate, right? At a rate where you're not saddled with tons of student loan debt to get your associate's degree, to get your certificate, and then to move on to advance uh, is just a great asset to our community. We need to continue to get that word out and encourage more students to join the diverse student body at my community college. Mr. Turner, thank you very much. Summer? Uh, Mott's, we pose the same question for Mr. Lossing. Mott's greatest strength and greatest weakness? 
how would you address that weakness? I think that the greatest strength of the college are its faculty and staff. Uh, my wife is a former employee of my community college, and she worked in the registrar's office. She worked in payroll, and then she ended, uh, wrapped up her career in the financial aid office. And I can't tell you, Summer, how many times we've been out in the community shopping over the last decade or so, and she runs into former students who basically thank her for all the work she did, especially in the financial aid, for helping them find a way to pay for college, either through a grant uh, or uh, or other means, basically, you know, filling out the FAFSA and everything else. So I swear it happens at least once or twice every single year she runs into a former student. And that is really the, the, the high quality of staff and faculty that the college employs who really care about their students, who care about their kids that enroll and want to make sure that they uh, move on to degree completion itself. She's now working at uh, Flint Community Schools at Flint Southwestern High School. And she takes that same mindset to helping her high school seniors get enrolled at Mott. She's helped uh, two or three of them this year enroll at Mott as well as uh, U of M Flint. I want to make sure that they're successful in their career path as well. So it's her big heart that really, and that's you know emblematic of all the faculty and staff at the college. I had great experiences with faculty members when I was an undergraduate there. We're still good friends of mine that I see out in the community uh, you know, before COVID hit, obviously. You know, I, I think a weakness, and this it may be true with any institution of higher education. I mean, and for the college itself, it's, you know, one of the, the funding streams is uh, appropriations. And we've seen that uh, a very small increase, even this year was just one-tenth of one percent from the state of Michigan. So we really have to advocate uh, with the governor's office and the legislature to increase the funding uh, for post-secondary education so that we don't have to rely on, on tuition to make up the, that shortfall. Thank you. Mr. Lossing, thank you very much. The question now is being posed to Mr. Chris Johns. And again, Mont strengths and weaknesses. And if you're elected, how would you address whatever weakness there may be? Thank you very much. I'd like to just start end with a positive note. So I'm going to start with the weakness. Um, ultimately, for, from my experience, of my wife, who is an instructor at Mott, I think the, the major weakness is the overall availability of classes and the scheduling that ultimately allows students to complete their degree and graduate. Um, she's informed me that in the past, sort of the sequential the, the sequence of classes has been altered, which may cause a student not to be able to take classes that are needed on a fall and winter perspective that then in turn doesn't allow them to graduate or it forces them to maybe stay additional time or to complete that. And I think that can be addressed through organizational and administrative policy that specific classes that are core for graduation are continuously held, um, whether it be online or in campus, and that we don't look for a bottom line approach of is, is a class going to run for a monetary reason, but can it allow students to graduate? Um, that's the weakness. And I would say from the strength is ultimately the public image of Mott Community College. Um, the high quality instructors, the students that are attracted to Mott Community College, I mean, that all goes into, you know, just how strong Mott is in, in the fabric of our community. And with that, you know, ultimately, you know, there's times where my wife, she is, she's taught at this point thousands of students and we will be out whether it be in the, uh, in the store or just out at a community event and students will approach her and just tell her, you know, how much they love mine, how much they loved her class. And I think that really goes back to the high quality instructors is that, you know, they're the ones who, who create that relationship and it helps to just ensure students graduate. And ultimately that really results in the strong public image of Mott Community College. Thank you. Mr. Johns, thank you. All right. So we've had a couple questions posed to individuals oh, today. Summer, I think Miss I think Miss Todd did not get a chance to answer that question. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I apologize, Miss Todd. <laughs> Sorry. Well, the question is posed to you of of the strengths and weaknesses and how to address the weakness. Once again, I apologize. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to start with the strengths. MCC is my lifeline, so it's like my stopping ground it's because I've went there and my family's been there. So there's so many strengths to speak about when it comes to Mott. Um, one of them is that the students are very creative. 
Uh, I've taught classes for over 15 years at Mott, and the students go above and beyond to make sure that all of their assignments are done. They ask questions, and that's very important because they're eager to learn. Another thing that I really like about Mott is the transferability. My own daughter, Indira, is a third-year college student at CMU, and she needed to take a class for math. Now, she doesn't like math, but she took the class, and she took it here at Mott, and she did extremely well. And she was happy because she felt like she could really grasp the material. So the smaller class size really helped. The professors here at Mott are always giving one-on-one -on -one attention. I've seen many of my colleagues in the hallways. They're talking. They're having their office hours. They're always available for students, and that's important. During this pandemic, they've been available just as much online. The staff, as a career, as myself being a having a career as a professor at Mott for over 15 years, Mott is Mott family. You can go onto campus at any time, and you can go in any department and speak with people, and they're always there and they're always helpful, and that's really important. The affordability. Now, I can tell you as a parent, CMU where my daughter goes is a lot expensive, more expensive than Mott. So I am I was very happy to have that bill a little less. <laughs> So also Mott's presence, the community presence, whether it's social media, billboards, even when you see former Mott staff or students, if Mott, this is our home, this is our environment, this is Mott, Mott has always been there, it's been Mott strong. The weaknesses, it was very difficult for me to find any weaknesses because I attended Mott, my daughters attended Mott, my parents were professors, I'm a professor. So I didn't really find weaknesses, but if I had to speak with one, I would also kind of have to piggyback on um, another person's response as far as the availability for classes. This time we're going to have to end it right there. We're, we're okay. at time right now. Okay. <laughs> it's, all, it's all right. <laughs> we're just so excited to share. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good things to talk about at Mott Community College overall. Thank you, guys. Thank you all to all the candidates for uh, your input on those questions from uh -huh. our audience. Do I get a Mr. Daly? I'm so sorry, Mr. Daly. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. I did, I, I, you have two minutes to answer. I'm sorry. Uh, I believe that I'll start with the, what the responding to the weak. Don't categorize it as being a weakness. We're at a transition point both in training and education and responding to what's ahead. And that's where we need to lead, look at is what's coming ahead of us. We're literally on the verge of this fourth industrial revolution, which is going to be an infusion of information in, across our entire society. And we need to be better prepared uh, to produce students that are going to be able to contribute and lead that transition. We need the role that the college is going to play is going to shift from being the classic bricks and mortar to being even more of a hybrid type of university college than it is today. And there are going to be many changes that are going to have to be made in the near term because the time with which we have to respond to these things is getting shorter and shorter. This response time is uh, collapsing. The, I think it's a remarkable opportunity for not only Mott Community College, but for Genesee County in the in surrounding counties, given where we are in, in a geographic position, given where we are in our technological position with the automotive industry, to really step forward and be a leader. But to do that, we've got to really make some transitional changes. And we've got to prepare the staff and the faculty in particular for making those transitions. Uh, there's remarkable opportunities associated with the integration of more online education into the program, uh, but those need to be done carefully and, and consistently. As far as our strengths, I think we're one family, we're one large family, and the strength, that is the strength, is that the barriers between the factions of the family, while sometimes we may disagree, we all do agree that we're, the progress of the college is essential. So it, I like the three C's, the commitment, compliance, and civility approach. I think that's a rock solid approach to maintain. And we need to be sure that when we define our, fa our family, we include students, 
faculty, staff, post-grad students, All right. incoming students. All right, Mr. Daly, thank you so much for getting the time. And thank you again to all of our candidates for uh, answering that uh, final question from us. And again, just to want to reiterate, there are seven people running for the Board of Trustees. However, Michael Siktovich and also Janet Couch, they were invited. However, they were unable to attend. Uh, but again, thank you everyone for answering that question for us. Summer. Thank you. Thanks everyone for tuning in from home and being with us today. Uh, now that we've heard from our candidates on how they would impact our campus and community alike, as an incoming trustee, we'd like to hear their final closing statements. May we also note that we had a couple questions that we could not get to because we are simply running out of time. For closing statements, each candidate will have one minute. We will begin with Ms. Todd. Yes, we'll begin with Ms. Todd. Okay, thank you, Summer. If elected as a member of my Community College Board of Trustees, I will ask in-depth questions about policy and programs so that we, as a community, understand the value they will bring to student learning. I will encourage the proposal of new initiatives to improve the education of our students. I will listen to and reflect the concerns of our community and work together with fellow board members to improve our college. I promise I will bring community-minded leadership to the job with my commitment to providing integrity, advocacy, equity, and inclusion to this role. I am committed to our community and dedicated to our together. Thank you, Matt, Matt and Summer for holding this forum. I have the utmost respect for all of the candidates. Thank you for your time you have given me this afternoon. Vote Anupa Todd for MCC Board of Trustees. Matt Strong, thank you. Ms. Todd, thank you. Mr. Chris Johns, you have one minute for your closing statement. Again, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in today's forum. Our community is blessed to have such a strong number of individuals who are so interested in this position. I mean, we do have big, fill, big shoes to fill. And with that, you have two votes. I'm asking for one of them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Turner, you're up next. Yes, uh, thank you to all the panelists uh, and the moderators. Uh, this has been a wonderful forum uh, to learn so much about Ma. Uh, I just wanna say that you know I'm running uh, for trustee uh, for the community and to really uh, bring diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, to the board of trustees. I feel like I'm very passionate about this. I'm also running, my mother served on this board many years ago, uh, Celia Turner, who was a great community advocate. And so I was spiritually compelled to run for this very board uh, to fill those shoes and move, move it forward. I also stand on the shoulders of, of my mentor and my lifelong friend, Lenora Crowdy. Uh, she encouraged me to run for this board, to be a part and to be a voice and have a seat at the table. Um, so I have seven years of board experience. I've represented the college at a national level. Uh, I continue to be an advocate uh, for the college at a state uh, and community level. And I would just appreciate your support uh, as we move forward in this election. And I ask for your vote, uh, Raphael Christopher Turner, for my community college board of trustees. Thank you. Mr. Turner, thank you very much. Mr. John Daly, your closing statement. Thank you. My name is John Daly and I would ask for your vote for the board of trustees for my community college. You should vote for me because I bring a unique perspective as a veteran and as a senior citizen to the board. I have a wealth of experience in the educational community, both as a teacher and an administrator. I have experience in Genesee County for over 20 years as a public administrator. I would be a forceful advocate for my community college, not only in the local community, but also in Lansing, where I have significant experience in working with legislation uh, approved that will benefit the uh, community. I appreciate the opportunity to address the public on this forum. And I'd like to thank everyone that's involved, most of all my colleagues for participating in this. I've learned a lot of things about my community college and about each of you that I had no knowledge of before. And again, there's two votes on the ballot, two slots on the ballot. It's on the back side of the ballot. I'm asking for one of them and my name is John Daly. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Lossing. 
Yeah, thank you to uh, my community college and ABC 12 News for hosting this candidate forum. And uh, thank you to my colleagues, uh, all great candidates, and uh, everybody has a, a great choice to make for two candidates uh, this year's election. Really enjoyed the questions that you, you, you prepared for us, as well as the questions from the audience tonight. I'm a lifelong learner, longtime educator, and community advocate. I'd appreciate your vote, uh, David Lawson for MCC trustee. Uh, either vote by mail at home uh, today or at the polls on November 3rd. If you'd like to learn more about me and my campaign, visit our campaign website at lossing2020.com. We're on Facebook. Uh, you can find us at using the at symbol, Lossing MCC, or you can send me, send me an email directly uh, to david at lossing2020.com. Thank you very much for your time after this afternoon, and have a great day. All right, candidates, thank you very much for those closing statements. Summer. And that will conclude this year's Board of Trustees Candidate Forum. Thank you for being here. And don't forget to vote, 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 November 3rd or through your ballot. Yes, Thanks thank you, again. everyone. Then thank you, everybody at home, and thank you to all the organizers for uh, putting this together. And also thank you to all the candidates as well, too. And it's been a very uh, unusual year for everybody, but uh, we definitely, with the help of technology, not letting that stop uh, us from getting out information that voters need to make an informed decision on November 3rd. So uh, for summer, I'm Matt Franklin. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great afternoon.